Welcome back everyone. Today I am documenting the crazy times that we are all currently living in and this is a bonfire that we had at home with no friends or family around. It was just the four of us plus our pets and in many ways it was a bit of a sad bonfire because normally bonfires are a get together of friends and family but we were not allowed to do that to celebrate my beautiful daughter's 12th birthday. So the first thing I did was I picked my background paper and I chose the lovely red paper that you see there. Now the paper is from Photoplay and it's from Living the Quarantine Life Collection and the actual paper is called This Happened. Next I decided to make my own border around the paper and I'm using the stamps from Photoplay also called Living the Quarantine Life. And I started off by just using some blocks and on one of the stamps that I'm using says hashtag stay at home. The second stamp says hashtag social distancing and then the third stamp is just a collection of little squares. So I started off by just stamping one of the signs. I think the first one I stamped was hashtag social distancing and then I embossed it in with white embossing powder and went over it with the heat gun as you normally do when you're embossing and then I did a row of the squares and then I did a row of the next word which are or the next phrase which I believe is hashtag stay at home and I did this all around the paper. I did like my single border but I decided that it needed a double border going around so this time for the double for the second border I used the the same phrases hashtag stay at home and hashtag social distancing but in between them I decided to use the little molecule stamp that also comes as part of the photo plays live in the quarantine life stamp collection I just thought that that gave it a nice little well, it tied it in with the whole theme of isolation or stay at home, which is what we were currently experiencing along with the rest of the world. Now, I did go around all four sides and I love the end result. Time for a little mixed media. I decided that because my photo was so dark being at night and all you can really see is the bonfire, I wanted to lighten things up a bit and add a bit of mixed media. The photo just wasn't pop popping off the page. So I'm just using a bit of gesso and I'm trying to be careful not to lather the whole page with the, with the gesso. So I just wanna go around just to give it a border around my photo. I want something to draw your eyes to the photo and not to everything else that's going to be going on around it. My first attempt at adding colour was to use the Puma Stone and the Antique Linen from the Distress Oxide Sprays, but it didn't actually work. I'm actually just using a little stamping block, but you really couldn't see anything. It just blended too much in with the background gesso, and I had to let that idea go. But you know what? We try these things, and sometimes they work, and sometimes, like in this case, they're a great big flop. So what I did was I looked at my photo for inspiration and decided to add some orange to the background. So I'm just using the, once again, the Distress Oxide, but in the colour Dried Marigold, and this is exactly what it needed. It's picking up the orange from the bonfire and it made everything come to life. I should add that in between layers, I am drying everything with my heat gun and as you can see, once everything is dried, the layer of dried marigold that I did with the Distress Oxide just was very pale. You could hardly see it. So then I decided it was time to get out my new toy and I'm now using the Dina Wakeley's acrylic paint in the lovely colour Cheddar. And before I forget, I should add that all these products that I'm using, especially the Living the Quarantine Life by Photoplay, are on special at Auntie Vera's Scrap, Scrap and Craft, and I will leave a link to Auntie Vera's shop in the description box. My photo still wasn't popping off the page, so I introduced a bright colour. I decided that that's what it needed to draw your attention to the photo, and I just pulled out this gorgeous doily from my stash. So now I've got the cut file here. Now this cut file is from Confessions of a Paper Addict. I will try to remember to leave a link in my description box. 
At this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the cut file, so I decided to draw your eye to the photo instead. In my stash, I had a orange frame that says, you are here, so I decided I was going to cut that up because I don't really use frames and just put it on my layout on the two opposite corners. So here I am just using some thread and laying it on because I, for some reason, I decided this layout needed a little bit more black. The cut file is back and I used the Plaid 19 paper to back it and here I have decided that I didn't like the orange on the logs so I'm just using some Distress Spray Stain in the colour Vintage Photo and a small brush just to change those logs into a more realistic colour of brown. This part did take the longest but it was also the most relaxing as I coloured in my logs in brown and then I also added some shading to my flames. I'm sorry I did get lost in the whole process of colouring in my logs and the fire and my flame that I don't actually show what colours I'm using and at this point I cannot remember. I know that I'm using the Distress Spray Stain in Vintage Photo and I believe that brown colour there might be walnut, but I really can't promise you that that's what I used. I love how that cut file looks now that it's completed, so it's time to work on the title. For my title, I am using some thickers from Aldi. They're not the best quality, but then I decided that the colour was wrong and I was going to alter the thickers by mixing some black gesso with some liquid. Liquitex natural sand medium and this just gave it a beautiful sort of rough texture to the letters and I absolutely love it. I like to keep my videos short so I won't bore you with the whole process of me colouring in every single letter. I actually want to document the date of this bonfire, so I'm going to be using this gorgeous stamp. It's also from the collection of stamps from Living the Quarantine Life by Photo Play. The date stamp that I'm going to use has got the date and then it has this some other wording on it that uh, I didn't want to use. So I'm just going to cover it up using some of this post-it note paper and once I've done all that I it all works but then I had issues with the stamp because even though I've had the stamp for a while in my stash I've never really used it so it wasn't stamp stamping properly as new stamps usually do you know you've got to stamp them a few times before they actually give you a nice crisp stamp. We are nearly at the end and I must admit that trying to find a place for my date stamp did take me a a few little attempts to find a spot for it and off camera I did do some journaling. The Living the Quarantine Life stamp set does have a lovely little journaling uh, stamp there which I stamped on some white paper, added my journaling and quite liked the effect of it. So it was time for some splatters and I'm just using the Dina Wakely acrylic paint in white and I believe I mixed it with a bit of water to water it down a bit and I went to town with some splatters. Once my title was dried I did bring it back in and what I did off camera, I forgot to record it, was I just used some of this Nouveau Mousse paste and with my finger I just rubbed it all onto that lovely grainy texture of my letters and it was time to just glue it all down so the title of this layout lands up being hashtag isolation bonfire and this is where I decided that I needed more splatters because I wanted to introduce more of that teal color as I had it on my doily and on my title so I mixed the turquoise color from the Dina Wakely uh, acrylic paint and some water and that is the end the final layout so here are some close-ups and i would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and till next time stay well everybody and take care bye